This video will show how to create a frequency distribution and a histogram manually using Excel. Every method has pros and cons. Two pros for the manual method are that it works with any version of Excel and that it does not require any add-ins. It has a few drawbacks though. It takes a little more time to set up than other methods, it has a few extra steps, and it can be very challenging to use for extremely large data sets. This data was obtained from the National Weather Service's website. It gives total snowfall during the month of January for each year since 1916 in Central Park in New York City. The first step is to sort the data in ascending order, smallest to largest. Highlight the data and click on the Sort and Filter button in the Home tab. Choose Sort A to Z. Step 2. Choose the first bin's lower class limit, or LCL. You can pick the minimum value, or you can pick any convenient number as long as it's below the minimum. For this data set, 0 is the minimum, which is a very convenient LCL. I'll put all of my LCLs in a single column, so I'll type LCL in cell C8, and then I'll type 0 in cell C9. Step 3. Determine the class width. If you're working on a problem that gives you a class width, use that value. If you're not given a class width, but you're given a certain number of classes to use, then you can divide the range of the data set by the number of classes to get a rough starting point. Sometimes the range divided by the number of classes is a messy number, so you can use a more convenient number as long as you go up. If you do not use a larger number, you'll end up leaving data out from your histogram. This problem states that our histogram should have eight classes. To determine the class width, then, I'll find the range and then divide by eight. The range is the maximum minus the minimum. The maximum is 36, and the minimum is zero. So the range is 36. I can do this division in any blank cell. So in J1, I'll type equals. 36 divided by 8 and press enter. 4.5 is not a very convenient number, so I will use 5 instead. Step 4. Type all remaining LCLs below the first one. To find the second class's LCL, I'll need to add the class width to the first LCL. 0 plus 5 is 5, so I'll type 5 into cell C10. We could repeatedly add 5 to the rest of the LCLs, or I can have Excel continue the pattern automatically. To do that, I'll highlight the 0 and the 5. Then I'll click and drag on the small black square in the corner of my selection. I'll fill down until I have 8 LCLs, then let go of the mouse button. I can see that my last LCL is 35. One quick note here before I go to the next step. A common mistake is to think that we add the class width to the LCL to find the upper class limit. That's incorrect. The class width is the distance between consecutive lower class limits, not the distance from the LCL to the UCL. Be careful that you're using the class width correctly. Step 5. Type the upper class limits. The classes need to bump right up next to one another with no gaps and no overlaps. The first class needs to end right before the second class starts. We can see that the second class starts at 5, so where should the first class end? Well, that's actually a little trickier than you might think at first. If we make 4 our first class's UCL, then what will we do with the data values down here around row 40? Where should the 1.1, 1.2, and so on go? The good news is, is that you get to decide that. If you want 4.1 to go in the first class, but 4.8 to go in the second class, that's fine. Or if you want everything below 5.0 to 
to go in the first class, that's fine too. This discussion is about something called class boundaries. If you make the class boundary 4.5, then everything below 4.5 will go in the first class, and everything above 4.5 will go in the second class. If we make the class boundary 5, then every data value below 5 inches will go in the first class, then 5 and everything higher will go in the second class. Now, the data in this example is precise to the nearest tenth of an inch. So it would be confusing if we just labeled the UCLs as integers. In this example, I think it makes the most sense to use 4.9 as my first UCL and 9.9 .9 as my second UCL. You're free to make a judgment call to determine what class boundary is best for your data in your situation. At the very least, you must follow the conventions that classes do not overlap and all the classes do not lose any data in gaps between them. By the way, you might think there's technically a gap between 4.9 and 5 inches, and you're right. However, since none of our data is more precise than a tenth of an inch, we're not going to leave out any data values, and that's the important part. To keep things organized, I'll label this column UCL and cell D8. 4.9 in D9 and 9.9 .9 in D10 and then I'll fill down the rest. Step six, count the frequency for each class. There are several ways to do this, but the most basic way is to scroll through the sorted data and count how many values are in each class. Excel has a built-in counter in the lower right corner of the screen. When I highlight all of the data values in the first class between zero and 4.9, I can see that there are 46 data values selected. I'll create a new column labeled frequency in cell E8. Then, for each class, I'll type the frequency in the column. 46 in E9, 27 in E10, 15 in E11, 5 in E12, 3 in E13, and 3 in E14, 0 in E15, and one in E16. I counted these frequencies earlier. The frequency distribution is complete. Since all the frequency distribution is, is a table that summarizes the counts for each class, that part is finished. We want to add a graph of this information though, so we're not quite done yet. Step seven, add a histogram. Using this method, the easiest way to add a histogram is to simply highlight the frequencies in cells E9 through E16, then click on the Insert tab and select the button that looks like vertical bars, Insert Column Chart. Choose the first option, Clustered Column. The histogram appears on our spreadsheet, but it looks pretty bare. We'll need to change how it looks. Step 8. Format the histogram properly. First, the bars on a histogram must touch with no gaps. The easiest way to make this happen is to choose Quick Layout Number 8 in the Design tab. Next, we need to make sure the horizontal axis is labeled with meaningful numbers. The most clear labels, in my opinion, are the full range for each class, LCL to UCL. To make the horizontal axis say that, I'll create a new column which only has these labels. It can be anywhere in the spreadsheet, but I'll put them in H9 through H16. In each cell, I'll type LCL to UCL. For example, 0, 2, 4.9 in H9. Once you have those labels in a nice list, click on the chart to select it, then click on the Select Data button in the Design tab. A window named Select Data Source will appear. This window is basically asking us where in the spreadsheet the various parts of the chart should look for the data. We want to change the horizontal category axis labels. So click on the Edit button under that heading. Now, click and highlight the list of labels we just made 
in H9 through H16. Click OK once those are selected. Now we can see nice descriptive labels in our chart. Remember, the goal is to be as clear as possible. There are other ways you may choose to label the horizontal axis, but whatever you choose, it needs to be clear. The last thing we need to change is the axis titles and the chart title. When we selected quick layout number eight, it gave us spaces to edit those titles. Clarity is the goal, so I always include appropriate units on axis titles. The chart title should give someone a general idea of what the graph is showing us. I'll give the chart the title January Snowfall in Central Park 1916 to 2016. For the horizontal axis, I'll type snowfall in inches. In a histogram, the vertical axis is always a count of something. In this case, it's the number of years that had a snowfall in that range. I'll give the vertical axis the label number of years. And now we're finished. Feel free to adjust other options in the design of the chart as long as it's readable and clear. You can change colors. You can change styles. Just needs to be clear.